You've arrived here at a critical moment. Tune in on real self-knowledge and creative power. Welcome to the Well Fit with Lockie Stewart podcast. This show aims to help men improve themselves physically, mentally, and emotionally, covering topics of fitness, mindfulness, and spirituality. Good morning, everyone, and I hope everyone had an incredible weekend. I know I had a nice and relaxing one, so it's good to be sort of back online. Yesterday, I tried to disconnect uh, for a while, which I did, and it felt amazing. So just getting back into the swing of things. Thanks to everyone who's posted. Hey, Emily, how you doing? I'm just putting the web address in there, then I'll put it down and focus. How you doing? Okay, Tony, how you guys doing? Everyone that's coming on, how are you doing? So guys, this episode here, not even an episode, this chat is going to be used. Well, this is going to be used as a podcast. So for those who saw last week, a heap of my podcast episodes went missing, left the titles. So uh, I did manage to recover about 30 of them. But for those that didn't, hey, Gussie boy, Oakley, how you doing? Uh, for those that didn't, uh, managed to get recovered. I'm just literally going to do them now as a live, but I'm also going to do it with your input. Thanks for the hearts, guys. So obviously each night I'm going to throw out the question or the topic, uh, so that way I can also get your input and share that on the podcast as well. So you guys are going to be on the episode. Thanks for helping out. Uh, for everyone that's tuning in, I'm going really well. Uh, busy morning, getting ready for training. This week is the start of the Open, the CrossFit Open, so I'm super excited to see how the last 12 months of training have paid off. Um, so basically, I'm just I'm not gonna be working too hard this week. I'm gonna be dealing with all the clients that I've got. I'm not gonna be looking for any. I'm literally gonna be training, eating, recovering, and it's my birthday on Thursday as well, so celebrating the birthday without any alcohol, which would be cool. So guys, let's get straight into it. So obviously, the topic for today is what advice or what can you learn from your parents, okay? So let me bring that up there. I'll get rid of the, uh, get rid of that and I'll just say what did you learn from your parents? And your parents. So I'm just putting the topic. So everyone who's coming on, Knows what it is. Mick, what's happening, legend? Emma, how you doing? All right, I'm posting that. That's posted. Topic. Hope uh, the coast is nice, mate. It looks awesome up there. And I love that you've changed your Instagram name. Cool. So obviously, like I said, guys, this is to replace an old podcast episode. So we want to, uh, I'd love to hear from you guys as much as possible. The topic is there. It's what did you learn from your parents? And this can be both good and bad, guys. Right? It doesn't always have to be a positive message. You could have learned stuff from your parents on how you don't want to be or things that you don't want to do. Uh, and I'll be bringing up a few people who've brought their or thrown their advice in there. Francisco, how you doing? Okay. This is awesome, thanks Oakley. What did I learn from my parents? That every action has a consequence, 100%. And I think even talking on that, it's like, I think about this now and unfortunately you look back and my dad worked so hard to uh, provide for the family, but the, the payoff from that was not getting to spend as much time with his children that he probably wanted to have, okay? So um, in the long run, you know, it's made now we're trying to build repair that relationship as opposed to you know, I think most people would much rather just have their parents around and get to build that relationship with them rather than you know having their parents away all the time working for something that you know doesn't money can't ever buy a relationship or it can't fill in that void so I think for me uh, and one thing that I learned and that's a really great point I would think every consequence or every action has a consequence but I think you know, for me, when I become a parent, I don't want to be a dad who is chasing money and not there to be a good role model or a good father. So I want to make sure that it's all about quality time and I have that balance and that's sort of what I'm going through right now. Glenny, long time no talk, brother. I'd love to hear what you've learned from your parents from the question below. Um, 
but it's exactly that so you know for me I want to make sure that I set up a lifestyle that is not all based around Sammy what's happening champion based around you know the money and trying to be more I want to understand that every time I you know spend time away from family etc you're you know maybe gaining something else but is it worth it is the payoff sacrifice worth it family isn't just make you legend family isn't a title just given it still needs to be earned 100 percent. and it it's the same with the relationship and i've seen this time and time again not only with my parents but with relationships all the time we go through that honeymoon phase and if you agree hit the hearts but we go through that honeymoon phase which is exciting it's it's crazy it's lustful it's um you know every every day is different and then somewhere along the way whether it's a three six nine month mark we become to you know comfortable and most people become complacent and they stop working on the relationship right you see it time and time again when people have children okay they then just take on this role and their identity becomes i'm a mum or i'm a dad and this is my role right rather than being like well i'm still an individual i'm still locky and these are my passions and this is what i enjoy doing as hobbies and now i have a kid as well so i get to play the the dad card as well and I don't have a kid, by the way, I'm just saying that. Um, so we tend to lose our identity along the way, which then obviously you know, frustrates both people in the relationship because you don't get together with your partner, right? Purely because you know they're gonna be a good parent. You get together because of their unique qualities. So I think you know another thing I've learned, and that's a great point, Mick, it's not just a title given. You don't just become a boyfriend or a partner. You've got to continue to earn that, and that, that's a lifelong thing. As you evolve and as life circumstances change, you've got to evolve and change with it. But you've got to do the work, and it gets to a point where you get lazy because you become so comfortable, but that's when you need to do the work the most because you don't want to just settle. You don't want to just you know, go through the motions where this relationship isn't what it used to be because it can still remain that you know exciting honeymoon period that it once was if you are willing to put in the work guys but i think so many of us just become lazy right so that's a good bit we will get to this other question that i've got pinned there um but the topic what did you learn from your parents thanks mick for throwing that in there there was something else humility and gratitude are always the big ones 100 percent. couldn't agree more and i think my mum taught me that really, really well. She's one of the most humble and grateful people that I've ever met and the most hardworking person that I've ever met. So when I look at her and, you know, she's been super successful, but you wouldn't know it. She just keeps to herself and she's always, you know, humble, always never wants to have the limelight on herself. And obviously, you know, that's a great quality to have. Right? But also at the same time, that can also work in against you in terms of, you know, chasing opportunities and getting out there, getting more exposure and moving forward. So, you know, you've got to look at them in both ways. So, thanks for the hearts, guys. Loving it. Uh, but I, what I learned from my parents, independence is paramount. 100%. I'm loving what you're throwing in, Oakley. Independence is, and everyone's parents raise them differently. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to have the opportunity to sort of make my own mistakes. And my parents never... Obviously, they disagree with a lot of the stuff that I did in the earlier times like drugs and drinking and probably bringing home a different girl every weekend for a while, um, which, you know, looking back, I don't agree with any of that, but that was just a phase I went through and they would often share their insight, but they would never lecture me. They would never tell me it was wrong. They allowed me to figure it out for myself, which I'm so grateful for because now I have the lived experience. Hey, the bearded, how you doing? So I think, you know, Becoming independent, learning to do things for yourself is incredible. And you see, there's obviously people who are dependent upon other people and don't take control. And then there's people who just get shit done. And they always seem to be able to problem solve. And, you know, they're never stressed when they're in an uncomfortable environment. And, you know, both have equal qualities, but definitely learning some independence. So first question or first uh, response to the sticker, which was obviously based around what did you learn from your parents? To ask yourself before buying do I want this or do I need this? It's true. Like, from my own experience, there was a time where I would just buy shit because I, I liked the idea of buying it. Every time I bought something, I felt that rush of excitement. I had something new. And then after a while, I was broke. I had a heap of things that I didn't really care about that didn't add any value to my life. 
Alexi, ça va, mec? Oh no, this is not French Alexi, sorry, mec. Spanish Alexi. So, uh, often that's a great thing, and it's the same with food now. It's like, my parents, my dad loves buying shit, and he's got a lot of possessions around the house, and I don't know why he does that. Um, whereas mum is more from the other point, it's like, do I need this? And she'll only buy something if she definitely needs it, to the point that she probably doesn't. I would say spoil herself enough so you know, for me I want to find that balance between obviously you know giving myself what did you say treats or gifts from time to time as opposed to just buying shit and cluttering up the house like I tend to uh, prefer to buy experiences next one was no matter what life throws at you keep you keep going. This is a great bit of advice and because that's exactly what it is. Like life happens and it's, you know, what happens to us has probably never been the same story that's happened to people before. Obviously similar experiences may happen, but events are always gonna happen. So it's up to you to determine whether you're gonna see it in a positive manner or a negative manner. And I know, you know, I'll use Oprah Winfrey as an example because I know her story is so powerful and so incredible and she was obviously uh, molested as a, as a young girl and instead of allowing that to send her into a, a dark state where she you know, got on drugs and could have completely ruined her life, she chose to use that to empower her and to empower billions of people around the world. So she had an event and a lot of people have had similar events and you can view it and let it completely destroy your life or you can view it and allow it to be a stepping stone to empower and become a better version of yourself okay so it's we all have setbacks everyone's going to have setbacks and once again guys you don't want to have this comparing game where it's like oh this person's had that that's way worse than i have what what am i complaining about or you don't want to then say oh what's this person complaining about that's nothing i've been through way worse it doesn't matter because whatever anyone's going through is probably the worst thing that they've ever gone through so it's you can't compare because the experiences are never the same and the backgrounds are never the same. So we've got to have compassion and empathy for those people and understand right what they're going through right now is pretty fucking hectic, but keep going, keep growing, use this. And ideally, guys, if you can take anything away from this is whenever you're having setbacks, no matter how bad it may feel, right, use it as an opportunity. Try and take a positive away from it. I know that's a cliche, but what can you learn from it to be, come out stronger or be better for the next time that it may happen or something else may happen? How can you learn to be more resilient from that experience? Right, my parents have been through so much shit and I just, how they keep going is insane. And I think that's where I got a lot of my work ethic from. I probably got too much because I don't know how to switch off, but how hard I've seen them work and they still work so hard I'm just like this is nuts like, so no matter what happens it's it's an opportunity to learn and yes I have bad stuff happen all the time setbacks and there are days where I it's hard to see the positive and I'll let myself wallow and be negative and moody and groan and grumble but then even after 24 hours I get back in that positive mind frame and then go right what can I learn from this because I don't want it to happen again and I know there's a lesson there to be better or something that I can share with people. That's why I do these videos, I do the podcast, because I share my life experiences with you guys. So no matter what life throws at you, just keep going. What do we got here? I don't know that is, M-J-C-E-S. I'm gonna go with Mick, Michael, something like that. I learned from my mum and I'm gonna assume you're American or Canadian because you spelled mom instead of mum in Australia, we spell it M-U-M. I learned from my mum especially to always help others, even when sometimes when you give more than you really should. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Your mum sounds like a freaking legend because I think, um, thanks for the hearts guys. Uh, I think it was David Wood, if you guys have ever heard of David Wood, he was sort of one of the first guys I used as a personal development mentor. Um, and what I learned from him was that, you know, and going back to this, you should always, in an opportunity to give because it's like that law of attraction. Even if you're, you know, when I was broke, 
uh, when I was going through shit, every time I gave to someone, even if it was just my time or to listen, I, f- I started to feel fucking awesome. Like I started to feel incredible. It filled me up as much as I'm sure it helped that person out. And I think I used to come from a mindset where I wouldn't do something unless I knew I was getting something in return. And I think, I guess, when you say it like that, you can almost, it's, it's, it could be selfish in the fact that you know by giving something, even if it's, you know, a David Wood's story was every time he goes to a hotel, he'll still make sure the room is spotless, the bed's made, uh, the, the bathroom's clean, even though there's a cleaner coming in and he'll leave five, ten dollars on the table to say thank you because that's someone's mum and they're doing their job, but there's no, just because we know that's happening doesn't mean we have to leave it in a pigsty. Hey, everyone who's joining. Okay, so it's, you know, always learning to give because it's that law of circulation that will always come back, even if it just makes you feel good, if it just makes you, it picks your mood up for the day and you're vibrating at a higher frequency, that's gonna have a huge ripple effect on how people see you and what kind of people wanna be around you. So I think that's that's awesome, and thanks for sharing that. I'm glad uh, you know, you're always open to helping others. Here we've got Kyle, what's happening, brother? Bearded bikes and biceps, what's happening? Dr. Casey, how you doing, legend? Emilka, how are you? I'm going really well. Great live session, but I gotta go, keep going. No worries, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. My mother always told me never put off until tomorrow what you can do today, don't procrastinate. 100%, 100%. That's great advice, and especially if it is important to you achieving. Hey, Joshy, how you doing? You achieving what you want to achieve, right? Like, I think, you know, when as you go through and you start becoming, or you have a lot more on your plate, the list of to do gets fucking massive. And then you have to start sorting through it and be like, right, which one is gonna have the biggest impact on my day? Which one is gonna allow me to get closer to my goals or have the biggest impact? And then you'll just work your way through that. But, you know, I'm really guilty of this with haircuts and things that I don't feel really are important. Like haircuts to me, I don't know why I'm using this example, but I love it when I get a fresh haircut. I feel amazing, I feel more confident, I feel like I look better. Okay, but then I'll just let it grow out for five, six, seven, eight weeks until it looks like a bowl cut again. And then I'm like, right, I, I should just do it tomorrow. And then it'll sort of be like, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. And then I eventually do it when I'm like, I should just book it in once a week and get it done. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Marie. Thanks everyone for tuning in. So definitely you know, procrastination, finding out what's important, getting it done. For those who are tuning in right now, the topic is pinned there, so what did you learn from your parents? Okay, I have a few questions, that, uh, responses, sorry, that I'm bringing up from the live story. <laughs> Eat with your mouth closed. Thanks, mum. My mum taught me that one as well, so I don't sound like a cow chewing way like. So, probably great manners, great advice, and you always see sometimes where people are eating with their mouths open and they sound like a cow or a horse chewing grass. It's not that pleasant to be around. This one is awesome. It's okay to not know everything and it's okay to ask for help. Thank you for putting this response in. I think this is amazing. Hey, Klein. And this is so relevant, especially to all of us and to men, especially. Obviously, that's what we mainly talk to. But we get so stressed and so beat up on ourselves when we fuck up and we do something wrong. Yeah, when you look at this response here, we don't know everything and we don't have all these lived experiences to you know not make these mistakes so even you know I've made some fucking really big and poor mistakes in my life and some that are, are terrible and I don't condone any of this is not an excuse but you're never given this roadmap on you know what you should do and what you shouldn't do and you only really learn those lessons after going through that experience and that's the time when you sort of can say right I will that didn't really align with me that was terrible that outcome is not what I wanted Okay, so, you know, it's okay to not know everything. The only way you're really gonna learn it, like I just said, is through the lived experience, through seeing other people experience it. Okay, but often it really doesn't sink in until we go through it ourselves. Okay, and it's at those times where you might need to ask for help. Good work ethic, my mouth's dry. Good work ethic in whatever you do, 100%. Don't commit to something unless you're gonna do it. What's the point? You're, it goes back to the very first, um, response someone put in about every action has a consequence if you're 
committing to something to 70%, you're still sacrificing something else that you could be giving 100%. So why would you do it if you're not prepared to... And this is why so many people are busy. It's because they're doing so many things at fucking 70, 80% that they don't want to be doing. It's like delegate that and focus on the things that you want to give 100%. Simple, you'll free up so much time. Hey, Lise, I've learned so many things from my parents and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute, but thank you for asking, really appreciate that. I've learned so many things. Um, and I, I hope I'm giving a bit of my spin on this for each of these ones as well. Um, and it's okay to ask, ask for help. Um, I think you know one of the biggest things I learned from my dad is he's not good at asking for help. And he's so proud that if he doesn't know something, he, he won't ask for help and he, he'll just burn it up and try and figure it out, which I think noble in the way that you're gonna learn stuff. But I've also seen how much it affects men not asking for help and also how much time it wastes like I always ask for help now from people who have achieved what I want to achieve or who have gone through thing, similar things that I may be going through because I know that they may have answers that can help me or fast track what I'm going through or maybe save me some heartache thanks for the hearts guys okay so guys it's you know it's okay not to know everything no one knows everything if you're one of those people who go I fucking know it all you're an idiot Gussie, thanks mate, hard to come it, okay? And the sooner you start getting comfortable with asking for help, the sooner everything that you're trying to achieve is gonna fast track. It's that simple. Like you don't have to, like, actually in saying this, try and figure it out, like give it your best because you're gonna learn better. With Miller, how you doing? But the moment that it's wasting time or you could be being productive another way, it's like ask for help simple or if you're struggling with your mental health or your physical help ask for help reach out talk okay do these things that benefit you in the long run so and like i was saying at least when you asked just before like what have i learned and for those who are tuning in right now i'd love to hear the topic for today is what did you learn from you parents i meant to say your parents uh sorry for the spelling mistake but not going to fix it uh is I've learned so many things and like I was saying earlier like I would much rather give time to my kids when I have kids or to my people that matter in my life than constantly chasing chasing money or chasing success right or you know success career success recognition and even though that that's one of my biggest challenges now because I've grown up seeing it and seeing how my dad uh, has worked and that's what he's always done because that was what I believe his role was or he thought his role was it's like I have to um, earn money for the family I have to work more so that they can have the things that they want and he did an awesome job at that but at the same time he sacrificed spending time with us we sacrificed a role model you know us having a role model um, so we spent more time around mum which you know and because he's not a good communicator he's not good at asking for help I was never like that as well so we you had two people who were poor communicators wanted to connect but didn't know how to connect so we didn't right so I want to make sure that when I have a family or everyone that's around me there is open communication it's not superficial everyone feels comfortable everyone feels uh, welcomed and like they've got a place where they can truly just be vulnerable that's what I want to uh, you know create for myself and it's one of my challenges at the moment one of my challenges is I, I love or I'm addicted to working and I feel like I should always be doing more and I, I find it really challenging to just sit there and go what you're doing is enough um, even though when I look back I, I do appreciate that but every day like even now I still struggle to do that so I'm constantly filling my time up with how I can uh, build a better business help more people uh, be more successful at the expense of you know spending time learning communication stuff like that so it's a constant battle, but it's what I'm working on. It's what I've seen sort of unfold in my family uh, my, with my dad and uh, mum. So that's sort of one powerful lesson that I definitely want to change so that it doesn't happen for me rolling forward. Uh, also, the second one, Tommy, how you doing, brother? Nice AirPods. <laughs> Thanks. They're actually really shit. Anyone who has AirPods, if you like them, I don't mind die all the time and... They haven't been as good, so I've got my cool ones as well. Uh, one of the other things, before I just keep, because I could share a million lessons, is alcohol. Like, I've, you, 
in Australia we grow up with this culture where it's like you want to have beers, you want to have barbecues, and I've seen, you know, like my dad's not good on alcohol, I'm not good on alcohol, um, so I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be addicted to alcohol. Like I just don't think it sits well with me, and just because. You know, my dad drank alcohol. It doesn't mean that I have to. So I want to start changing these things, and I don't want to, you know, when I have kids in the future, or I don't want to be a role model for people. Even you guys who follow me, as a guy who's just getting hammered, drunk, or taking a heap of drugs, I want to, I want to stand for something more than that. Right. So seeing how, you know, dad was a, a really good cricketer, but he let everything go, and like me, has had a few car accidents from alcohol and all that sort of stuff. And I feel that if I went back to drinking and not to, I have a few beers but I don't get hammered um, if I went back to that I could just see you know I'm not going to achieve all the stuff that I want to achieve and it, it's a cop out because of what you know blaming it on alcohol and I do black out and I'm not a good drunk but at the same time I can control the situation by just limiting my alcohol intake so that's you know that's what I have chosen to do and that's what I'm going to continue to do so there are a few things that I've learned and thank you to everyone who uh, put what you learned from your parents in. I'd love to hear if you guys have any topics you want to talk about tomorrow, DM me, send me a, a DM. But if you've got value from this, push the heart button. It's going to be uploaded as a podcast. Uh, so you can definitely share it, re-listen to it. Um, but I definitely want to start having more interactive conversations with you guys. So we'll have daily topics. Sometimes I'll have questions asked, okay, so that we can get a full-on discussion around that. And it will be great to hear everyone's feedback. So thanks again, once again, guys. You should lecture kids about your way of thinking. I'd love to. like I, I, And I don't want to lecture. I hate the word lecture because I personally fucking hated being lectured myself. But I think if my story can get people to think a little bit differently or get people to think about things that may be happening in their life, then 100% open to doing it. And I feel in the future I will be, but I just want to focus on one thing at a time and... Uh, really deliver there and then see what evolves from that but I appreciate that Lisa okay have an awesome day guys and once again if you got value I'll be doing these every day like I've been doing uh, to try and you know get this discussion going have a great day guys and we'll see you tomorrow oh if you haven't seen my new post all my posts from last night jump on there I really appreciate it. if you can comment on it uh, share your experience and give it a like as well that means a lot because obviously as I've been saying each live the old instagram algorithms are changing all the time and not as many people are seeing content uh so that would be a massive help appreciate it guys have an awesome day see you Liz. hey guys really sorry that um this audio there was about three minutes missing that actually went silent for some reason um it was coming through an Instagram live so I've just cut it and then we've started a second part so uh, carry on listening thank you for listening to the man that can project podcast my name is Lockie Stewart and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful if you did please take a moment to rate and review the man that can project on your favorite podcast platform And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.